Out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Reverend Father, these words are taken from the introit of today's Mass. Out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. And of course, today is the first Sunday in November, the soul, the month in which we remember the holy souls in purgatory. The holy souls, the poor souls that are crying out to us for prayers. They say, out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. These soul, these words are often applied to the souls in purgatory. But God only hears their prayers through us. They are crying out to us for prayers, and especially in this month of November. So let us take a little look at the doctrine of purgatory and what it means to us. So purgatory is a doctrine, of course, that we must believe as Catholics. It has been believed by every Catholic since the beginning of Christianity. And even in the Old Testament, they believed there was a place where one goes to be purged of the sins, of the punishment due to the sins. And so it is a place where if one dies in the state of sanctifying grace, the soul will go after death if he has not fully made satisfaction for his sins in this life. So if the soul goes to confession, the guilt is taken away. But there's still that satisfaction that needs to be paid for the sin. We can take an example just in the natural life. If someone steals something and afterwards they are sorry for stealing it, then that is good. But if they do not return the thing that they have stolen, then there's something lacking. That satisfaction needs to be there. The justice needs to be restored. And so it's the same with God. When we sin, we, we sin, we offend God, we offend his justice. That justice needs to be restored. The temporal punishment that is due to sin will either come in this life or in the next. If we do not make satisfaction for it in this life, we will make satisfaction for it in the next. And St. John Vianney says, of those who die in the state of sanctifying grace, only a few chosen do not go, only a few chosen do not go to heaven, meaning that most souls who die in the state of sanctifying grace will spend time in purgatory. He also says the pains which are in purgatory exceed our imagination, exceed anything we can think of. Nevertheless, God does permit some souls to appear to, to us here on earth from purgatory. Some souls that he gives this opportunity to ask for our prayers. We have many examples down through the centuries of the church of souls appearing to us from purgatory. We have Sister Teresa Gesta in 1859. She was a Franciscan nun, led a very holy life, but she appeared to one of her fellow religious soon after she died. And as she appeared to her, she imprinted her hand on the door like a burning hot iron and said, Behold how I suffer. And of course, the sisters began to pray for her more and more, get masses offered, offered for her, and eventually she appeared back saying that she had gone through purgatory into heaven. We have Saint Severin, an archbishop in the 5th century of Cologne. Again, a very holy bishop. He was a saint. But he appeared to one of his priests soon after he died, saying, Behold how I suffer in the flames and the, of purgatory. And the priest was shocked to see that this holy archbishop was in purgatory. And he asked him, What, what are you there for? What, what have you done that deserved you to go to purgatory? And he said, I, was, I, was, I would say my, my office hastily and without recollection. And so he's, he spent time in purgatory for this sin. So if holy religious go there, if 
if bishops go there, then lay people will go there also. And St. Bridget of Sweden, who was favoured by God by many visions of souls in purgatory, once saw this young girl in purgatory who had abandoned her life to luxuries and vanities of this world. And she said to St. Bridget when she appeared to her in purgatory, she said, by the grace of God, I got to purgatory because I got confession soon before I died. But now I suffer exceedingly. This head of mine, which I love to be adorned, and I sought to be, and I sought to draw the attention of others, is now devo devoured inside and out with flames. These shoulders, these arms, which I loved to see admired, bound in chains of red hot irons. And she also, after enumerating her sufferings, said that not only she is culpable, but also her parents, who left her go to these places of occasions of sin and to dress immodestly. So why then do these holy souls, these ones, the, the nun in Italy, the bishop, the girl who got confession before she died, why are they suffering? Because they're living lives of tepidity. And we need to be perfect to get to heaven. As the Apocalypse says, nothing defiled will enter heaven. So if we do not atone for our sins in this life, we will spend time in purgatory atoning for them. And of course these souls, they cannot help themselves. They cannot do penance. They cannot get the sacraments. They cannot merit anymore. It's this life is where we merit. This is where we gain merit. In purgatory they are, they are suffering. But they want to suffer because they know that's the will of God. It is the only way they will get to see God and spend eternity with him. They know they have saved their souls, but now they are suffering. Suffering for the sins they did not atone for in this life. And they want their time to be shortened. But the only way it will be shortened is by our prayers for them. What then? are we doing as part of the, of the communion of saints? We are the church militant. They are the church suffering. They are part of the communion of saints. They are part of the church. What then, what then are we doing for these souls that are suffering? If we have parents who have died, close friends, relations, does the proverb, the proverb, out of sight, out of mind, does that only ring too true? when we think of these souls in purgatory. Those souls that have died, maybe we think of them for a week or two afterwards, and we're, we pray for them intensely, but then we begin to not think of them anymore. If we saw someone dear to us, close to us, suffering in this world, we would do everything we could in order to relieve their suffering. We would do everything we could and there's nothing that stops us from praying for the souls in purgatory, and especially those that are dear to us. And even more than that, those souls that we knew in this life that are now suffering in purgatory, maybe they are there and suffering because we were a cause of some of their sins, maybe through our bad example or the scandal that we have given them, or maybe the way we our immodest speech, or dress. All of these things may have been a cause for their suffering in purgatory right now. So even more of a cause we have for praying for them. And these are only the souls that we know of. How many souls are dying today and are in purgatory by the grace of God that have no one to pray for them? We think of the new mass, the funeral, in, the funeral rite in the new mass. It's more of a eulogy as opposed to the requiem mass that we have in the Latin mass. Everything is directed at the soul, praying for the soul to get him out of purgatory if he is there. And it's because that if sin is not talked about, then there is no need for purgatory. That the soul just goes straight to heaven, but it's not the way. 
We know it from St. John Vianney. Most souls will go to purgatory. So we have the duty to pray for all souls that are in purgatory, not just the ones that we, that we know of. How then are we going to respond to these souls who are crying out of, out of the depths to us, crying for our prayers, that their time in purgatory may be shortened? Do we realize that the spiritual realities in this world are greater than what we have here on earth? And the greatest way we can help these souls is by getting Masses said for them, or assisting devoutly at Mass. And of course, the Rosary, Our Lady, she, she's the mother of the afflicted, and these souls in purgatory are most afflicted. Again, they know their salvation is secure, but they want, they want to be with God right now. So today then at this Mass, let us remember these souls, and especially for this month of November. And let us, let us also resolve to live a life free of every deliberate venial sin, being attached to God only, not to sin, so that when we die, our purgatory may not be long, and we will be called to our heavenly home forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.